Hi, morning everyone. Sorry, I'm a bit croaky this morning. <laughs> My name is Mina. Welcome to Knitting Expat. Today is the 1st of June. Wow, how are we in month six already of the year? I swear, like, like a week ago was Christmas. Anyway, um, welcome. Welcome to the Knitting Expat podcast. This is predominantly a knitting podcast, but um, as you may have guessed from the name, I don't live where I'm from. I'm um, I'm from the UK, from London, but I live in Bahrain, and at the moment I'm in Dubai. <laughs> so this one is this episode is coming to you from Dubai. Um, apologies if you can hear background noise. That would be um, a three-month-old baby. For those of you who are new, not my baby. Um, I'm staying with a friend in Dubai at the moment and uh, looking after her little three-month-old at the moment while she's busy taking care of the other kids this morning. Um, yeah, so, like I was saying, um, welcome to all new and returning viewers. If you're new to the podcast, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, check me out. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It means so much to me that you would take the time out of your day to uh, watch this. Uh, places you can find me. I'm on Ravelry as Mina86. I'm on um, YouTube as The Knitting Expert. Um, uh, I'm on Instagram as Mina Phillip. And we have a Ravelry group, which is The uh, Knitting Expert Podcast. And you can find show notes for this and all other episodes at knittingexpat.wordpress.com. So I think that pretty much uh, covers all the introductory stuff. I, like I mentioned, I have baby Sienna with me, who's three months old, and hopefully she'll be perfectly content and happy while I film this, even if you can hear her. Apologies if that's annoying. Um, but if she gets fussy or something, I may have to pick her up at some point. She had vaccinations yesterday, so she, she was a little bit fussy last night. Um, but yeah, anyway, she should be fine. She's a pretty good, easygoing baby. Um, I just have a couple of quick thank yous to mention. Uh, Holly from the Swift Knits podcast, thank you so much for mentioning me in your latest episode. Thank, oh no, the one before, like two episodes ago, I think. Um, thank you so much. You were so sweet. And I love your podcast. I've been watching some of your back episodes as well. And it's just so sweet. Your daughter is so adorable. Um, and to Nathan of the Suckmetician podcast, thank you so much for the lovely shout out. It was lovely to meet you too. And I love the central double decrease. Honestly, it is like one of my favorite um, stitches, stitch combinations to do. I just, I just think it's so much fun. But maybe that's just the knitting geek in me. Oh well. Um, right. So a little quick update. My um, my hat pattern, the cabled hat pattern, that is going to be released tomorrow. I'm just touching up final touches and double checking and triple checking the spellings and stuff like that. Um, so that'll be released tomorrow. That's called Cables for Lara. I showed it to you in my last episode, and I mistakenly forgot to pack it this week. While I when I came away to show you this week, so I will show you that again next week. And um, by then the pattern will have been released. So keep an eye out on Ravelry and Instagram for that. I will announce it on Instagram, and obviously it will be released on Ravelry. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. And on to FOs. So my first FO. This, this one this lovely bag made for me by my friend Marina who I actually got to catch up with last week so that was a lot of fun but more about that later so first up is uh, the boat trip cowl that I made which was a test knit for Chrissy of the Stitch Together podcast uh, just a little recap that's what it looks like And I knit mine out of Malabrigo sock in the Velvet Grapes colorway. Oh, wait, you see that. And as you can see, I've got plenty left. I knit the small size. Oh, cables running out. That's with three and a half millimeter needles. 
and honestly it looks tiny right now but it does fit and it is a cow it's joined at the back you knit part of it flat and then you join it together for the lace portion um as you can you can't really see much to be honest at the moment because it's not been blocked but i will be blocking this once i get back so that's the first fo and that was a lot of fun to knit it was very much once you got going with it you just kept going then next up i have three fo's which i don't know to me in my head they're always just one but that's just because it's from the same wool yarn so i knit some socks out of Osterman step oh bless you are you okay yeah all right so that's Osterman step i'm not sure how well that's focusing so apologies for that and this is number 10 color as the original with aloe vera and her hobart oil Osterman fashion style original so so yeah i thought the fun the stripes were fun colors and i have plenty left over two balls i split it into two. just have to say this ball was a nightmare to wind it just it was just full of yarn bath it was anyway um right yes so this was the first pair that i knit little tube socks for one of the girls so my friend that I'm staying with she's got twins and um, a baby the twins are two and a half so this is the first pair and this is the second pair as you can tell I did not bother with trying to match even the two socks are ever so slightly off which I think is kind of appropriate because the girls they're twins but they're not the same they're non-identical twins so I kind of thought that was fitting and to be honest they're, they're, they're two and a half they're not gonna care if their socks match <laughs> Um, they probably won't be wearing these every day because, like I said, we live in they live in Dubai, and um, it's pretty hot right now, and it's only going to get hotter. If you followed me on Instagram, you'll have seen that the last couple of days it's been in the mid forties centigrade, so that's around a hundred, hundred and ten Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's only the beginning of June. Um, so these socks will mostly be for either in the winter when it's a bit cooler or more likely it'll be for when they travel, like when they're on planes and stuff to keep the little toes warm. So that's why I made tube socks really, but rather than socks with heels because they're gonna grow. They're not gonna be on planes all that often and so at least this way they'll last a little bit longer. And I made a cute little baby pair for little baby Sienna. And these are so cute. I've already tried these on her a couple of times. And I think she gets a little bit fussy because I just think they're a bit too warm right now. But they're so cute. I love them. These, these, this pair literally took me a couple of hours. It was one evening's worth. So much fun and so quick. And those, I knit those all on two and a half millimeter needles. And I didn't use a particular pattern. I read a couple of patterns and then kind of made up my own thing. Um, but if you go onto the project page that I have for the socks, I've written in the description, in the notes at the bottom, um, how many stitches I cast on, how many rows of ribbing I did, how many rows I did for the body, and then what kind of toe decrease I used. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're interested to know how I did them, you can just check it out there. Um, next up is my... Yes. Nope, not that one. Wrong bag. It's in this bag that I made myself. With that ice cream cone bag. This is my filtering daylight shawl, which I showed you the progress of last time. And uh, this is knit in Quinson Company Chickadee, so that's their sport weight. In Frost, which is this one, and Frank's Plum. So Frost is number 103 and Frank's Plum, sorry, is um, 114. Don't know how well you can see that. There we go. Really beautiful, rich purple and um, a nice sort of frosty grey. 
This is the pattern, Filtering Daylight by Suvi Samola. And I use my high highs for this one, my um, four millimeter high highs, and they were, they were actually really good. Really enjoyed it. And this is the finished shawl. Again, not blocked. This will this will stretch majorly once it's blocked. So you get a better idea of how it was constructed now. So I did the middle section first in the round, and then you just knit each wing, as it were, separately. And then you pick up stitches along the edge, and then you've got live stitches along here. And then you knit the knit the border down in the contrast colour, which I think looks brilliant. I probably had enough, I could have done it all in the in the purple, but I like the contrast, I thought it looks really nice. So that was a fun knit, and really quite quick, sport weight really does knit up a lot quicker than fingering. And my fourth FO, which up until last night was a whip, I cast it off um, around 9pm-ish. And that is actually a gift knit, it's gift knitting this one. And this was the one that I was knitting out of Cascade 220 Sport, another sport weight. I've not really knit much with sport weight yarn and now I'm knitting loads. These two colours, so the blue is colourway 813 and the beigey colour is colourway 873. These are the tags. This down. So it's super wash, which because it's a gift, and this is actually going for Perry's, going to Perry's mum, and um, oh bless you, um, he said it would be better if it was super wash. So super wash it is, and this is I can get to the this is the film strip shawl. Also by Sylvia Samola. Again, yeah, notice I quite like her patterns. And that's kind of what it looks like. So I'm really sorry for the bad picture quality. My printer was being really funny at the time. I was really intrigued by how the stripes all worked. And it is it is really interesting, actually. She's, I'm not going to say too much, but it's an interesting short row technique. It gives you the stripes. That's what it looks like. And it's absolutely massive. It's actually, I think mine's turned out bigger than um, the measurements she gives. It's actually as long as my wide sp wingspan. Let me just double check. I think. Yeah, she says it should, it should block out to about 60 inches or 150 centimeters. My wingspan is more than that, and this is my wingspan. It's actually longer than my wingspan. It you can't see, but it actually stretches beyond my fingers. And once this blocks out, because it's super wash as well, it will stretch. But that just means it will be extra warm and extra snuggly. And you might see some ends here and there, but they are all woven in. All my all everything I've shown you has had the ends woven in. I just quite like this. I might leave this on. Um, it's lovely, snuggly. And because obviously it's a lovely squishy garter stitch. And my mother in law really loves blue, so I hope, I hope, I hope that she really likes this shawl. Right, well, sorry about that. I had to uh, stop recording there for a minute because the little one was being a little bit fussy and demanding to be held. And now she's finally fallen asleep and I've been able to put her back down again. She looks so sweet. Um, right, so where was I? Whips. Okay, so um, the one whip that you guys are all fully aware of now is my Persistence is Key cardigan. Um, can't remember who designed it. I don't have the pattern or the project with me. There's been no change to that because I don't have the project with me. So since the last time I showed it to you, I haven't worked on it because I've been away. Um, I'm starting to wish I had brought it with me now because um, you'll see why in a minute. But anyway, so that's still on the needles, that's still to be done. 
it's um, it's a little bit frustrating for me because I'm not used to having something languishing on my needles for so long. Um, I cast on 6th of April and honestly this has been the longest I've had anything on the needles for. Um, predominantly that's because I've just been travelling so much and it's not a travel friendly project and I think I covered most of this last week. Um, anyway, so the my next whip are a pair of socks and these are a pair of cuff down socks. Let's get all the ends and bits and bobs out of the way. And this is what they're looking like. I love how these are flashing up because I think it looks so much fun. There we go. And this is a heavily variegated yarn. With lots of rainbow colours. Let me see if I should probably let go. And this is a fortissima fortissima colour. And this is colourway number 2402. It's a pretty standard sock yarn blend. I believe it's German. 25% nylon, 75% wool. And I'm knitting these on 2.25mm needles. And I'm using the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern as a basic guide for this one. I want to try the heel on that pattern everyone goes on about the Hermione's everyday sock pattern and the heel um, mostly Kay Jones of the bakery bears and she's really the reason and a couple of other people um, why I want to try this and give it a go see how it turns out and like I've said before I've always a bit concerned about um, cuff down socks and knitting cuff down socks for me and not running out of yarn so as a precaution I wound up a small ball of um, the Lime brand, Sockies. This is the Peanut Circus, or Circus Peanut colorway, so a nice sort of orangey color. And it goes really well with the orange in the variegated. So I'm using this for the heels, heel flap and turn. And then if I see I'm running out to the toes, then I can use this for the toes as well. And that way, that's kind of like my little insurance policy to make sure I don't run out of yarn and I figure that's probably what I'll do once I get, until I get a hang of how um, how much yarn I use for cuff down socks and how long I want the cuff to be I think I might use alternate heels and toes just to see how things go and I'm not saying I'm a complete convert to cuff down knitting but um, I am enjoying it almost as much as I enjoy toe up knitting and I think there's um, there's still quite a bit to explore with sock knitting for me because I'm still really new to it. I've only knit a few pairs so far and I've only really been knitting socks since December. So um, definitely, definitely want to try different heels, different styles, different methods and until I find what works for me. And I have a lot of socks that I need to make this year for gifts and for people that I want to make. So um, a lot of opportunity to practice, I guess. And that's it for whips. Yeah, um, this is why I wish I'd brought the cardigan with me now because that sock is all I have to work on at the moment. And as you can see, the cuff is almost finished. The little stitch marker thing just is just marking the number of rows I've done so I know. I've done 42 rows now, so that stitch marker is marking row 40. I was only going to do a 60 row cuff, so I've done 15 rows on by one rib, and then um, I've done 42 rows so far stocking it. I was only going to do a 60 row cuff, but I might make it longer, um, if only so I don't run out of knitting, because um, I did most of this yesterday. I mean, I started the, rip, the cuffs earlier, like the day before, but I did most of the stocking that bit yesterday. I've still got another three days. Four, four days, but I'm not going to have much knitting time on Thursday, I don't think, because I've got meetings and stuff for work on Thursday. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a bit worried that I'm going to run out of knitting before the end of the week. Um, hmm. I thought I'd packed enough for two weeks, but I guess not. Um, 
One, two, three, four, five. I've got like six FOs. I don't understand how that ought to have been enough. Anyway, I digress. You should always pack more knitting. That's the moral of this story. Um, right, okay. So as for upcoming, um, most people have like a Ravelry queue. I just haven't bothered setting up a Ravelry queue. But I've been running um, Excel spreadsheet, and this is a relatively old version of it now because I've changed it so much. But what I do is I kind of have my own little queue going. I have the list of projects and the needles I'd need and the yarn I, I'm planning on using for it. And then I have a start and end date. So this is kind of just for me, outside of Ravelry, running sort of project lists, as it were. Um, and this helps me plan a lot as well when I was trying to decide... Um, what yarns to buy, especially when I was in London, I kind of sat there with everything I'd already bought and planned what I was going to make with them, or at least have an idea of what kind of project I was going to make with them, even if it didn't end up being that particular one that I put it against. Then um, that way I knew if I was going to buy anything else, what sort of things I'd want it for, what other projects I had in mind, and so I wasn't, I was hopefully not buying too much or too much of the same thing. Um, so yeah, and actually I went through this last night to have a look and see where I was at. And there's, so there's 30 items on this list, who are on my current list, not counting the 12 pairs of socks I want to knit by the end of the year for people, for friends and stuff. Um, and I realised out of the 30 items on the list, I've already got 14 of them, uh, I've sorry, I've already got about half of them finished. Uh, and I have 14 FOs in the month of May alone, which I think is pretty good. I think that's pretty good going. Um, so yeah, I'm quite I'm quite chuffed with that. Um, but yeah, as for upcoming, sorry, that's where I was at. As for upcoming, I am planning on start. Well, I want to make a serious dent on that cardigan now because it's starting to piss me off that it's still on the needles and I still haven't finished it and it's just one of those things that now is getting to that point where it's more frustrating than I'm not really bored with it I'm just frustrated that I haven't been able to work on it as much as I'd like to and that it's not finished so I think this weekend I've got a lot of other things I need to do this weekend coming up but um, I probably won't cast on anything new I will restrain until after the weekend and I will work on that cardigan. I don't imagine I'm going to finish it this weekend just because I have so much to do and there's still quite a bit to knit on it. I've still got two sleeves, the rest of the body and the button band to pick up and knit. So there's no way that'll be done in a weekend. But I want to get a serious dent on the body this weekend if possible. So that I'm going to try and focus on. And then um, I want to cast on for my dad's jumper, the Raglan top down cardigan jumper that cardigan jumper that I want to make him for his birthday. I've got a shawl that I want to make for my sister in law for her birthday and so I need to cake up the yarn for that and get started on that one. I have um I want to start a lace shawl. A shawl is actually knit in lace weight yarn because I've never knit with lace weight and I bought quite a bit of it on this trip and I want to knit with some of it so just to start getting used to it and see what it's like, see if I like it. I want to knit more socks, I've already mentioned that. I have um, a lovely list of people to make socks for. When I went back to the UK, I, I took feet measurements of a bunch of people, friends and family and stuff, so I'm looking forward to making socks uh, for them. And so, um, the final thing that's upcoming that I want to talk about is my um, Volmise lace garn skein that I got. The, skein of Grapes for Sherry, which is the lovely variegated, goes from purple to um, a lovely green colour. And uh, so I was chatting with, uh, her name on Instagram is Leah Unraveled, and I think it's the same on, on Ravelry as well. And she was commenting on one of my pictures saying that um, she thinks that I should knit the Viajante, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, by Martina Bem which is, and that word is Portuguese for traveller. So I'd seen the pattern before and I'd kind of considered it previously, but I'd kind of 
unconsidered it as it were I kind of put it aside and was like no no I'll need something else but then after she mentioned it I went back and had another look and she kept sort of like prodding and being like yeah no you should knit it you should knit it kind of thing and uh, I went back and looked at it again and I looked at a little video that Martina Bem does showing different ways you can wear the that shawl cow thing I'm not a cape I don't know what to call it and um I started to realise, you know what, that would be the perfect thing for travelling and considering it's Portuguese for traveller, I thought that was quite fitting and we've got quite a bit of, it's got quite a few trips coming up um, and I am, you know, we travel quite a lot anyway, so, and I'm always cold on planes, I'm always taking stuff to wear on planes, knitting, cardigans, hoodies, shawls, whatever. So. I thought it would be quite nice to actually have one thing that's dedicated for flying and or travelling in general and it's big, it's warm, it's lovely and yeah so I think I, think I might be knitting the Viajant. We will see. It won't be anything I'll be in a hurry to finish. Obviously I would love to finish it um, but I have other more um, not so much deadline knitting, but I have other other things that need to be knit first, if that makes sense. So, whilst I might cast it on soon, I'm not going to be in a hurry to finish that one. Right, so moving on to the week in review. This section is kind of long, which is why I left it until after the knitting content was over. So yes, if you're only here for the knitting, that's it. There's my FOs and my whips and a bit about what's coming up. Um, but I want to talk a bit about my week in review. Those of you who follow me on Instagram will probably know the gist of most of this already because I've been on there going on about it. But so the main reason I'm in Dubai is to sort out my um, the visa, my entry visa to go to Saudi Arabia to be able to get my residency sorted. So sorry, allergies. For those of you who don't know. I, uh, my husband and I, we live in Bahrain, but my husband works in Saudi Arabia, which means that we get a um, residence visa, residency visa, to live in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, we don't want to live there. We don't live there now. We want to live in Bahrain, and because there are actually quite a lot of people who work in Saudi Arabia but live in Bahrain and do the commute daily, uh, Bahrain has a um, a special sort of like semi-residency like a um it's like a different type of residency visa that they give to people with Saudi residency visas who have who live in Bahrain so in order to get that you have to have a Saudi residency first so Perry already has that he has his Saudi residency and he has his Bahraini residency so which is why we can live in Bahrain and I'm technically there on a visitor visa and I can only stay three months at a time which so far hasn't been an issue because I've been traveling so um, I've never been in Bahrain for more than three months so um, but I do need to get my visa sorted because otherwise I can't open a bank account there I can't get my medical insurance sorted I can't you know loads of things become um, difficult so so that's what I'm doing in Dubai because Dubai was my last place of residence. I can't I had to come back here, either that or I'd have had to go back to the UK again. Um, so I'd come back here to go do a medical test. That's fun. It's just a blood test and an x-ray, but that in itself was a mission. And then I had to go to um, submit my application to get my entry permit, which allows me to enter Saudi Arabia. And then once I'm there, I have to do the final steps to actually get my residency permit and visa, as it were. So, the medical in Dubai, that was fun. I got here on Sunday night, in the Monday morning, bright and early, up, out the door, and off to the medical center to do my medical. Uh, first hurdle, <laughs> they wouldn't even let me through the door. Um, I wasn't dressed appropriately, and that was my own fault. Goes back to the whole being culturally aware. Most places are fine, but with government-run places, um, like 
hospitals, medical centres, wherever you're going to get anything done, if you're going to get a driving licence or whatever, they're very strict on the dress code. It's shoulders covered, knees covered. My dress just about skinned my knees, it wasn't long enough, so they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> the security guy wouldn't let me through the door. So I had to turn around, and get back in the car, come back to my friend's house, get changed and go back again. Um, like I said, that's my own fault. It's happened to me before. Um, my main issue is because I'm tall, dresses that would be fine on other people and would be long enough just aren't long enough on me. So, um, and honestly, it's happened to me before. I really ought to have known better. If I hadn't been, um, if I hadn't slept badly the night before because I've just been sleeping badly in general and if I didn't have to wake up so early in the morning, I'd have probably had my head screwed on enough to have remembered that, but I didn't, so... Anyway, thankfully my friend only lives about 15 minutes away from this medical centre, so it wasn't that, didn't take that long, it was just frustrating. And I hadn't had my coffee yet that morning, so I was a little bit grumpy. Um, I went back, and it was fine this time, they let me through. It took me about half an hour to figure out where I had to go, the place was so busy, there were so many people all over the place. There's about 10 different blocks in this medical centre, 10 different buildings. And everyone I asked, where do I have to go to for this, would send me somewhere else and to deal with some, because they didn't want to deal with it or they weren't sure what I was asking. Most people were there to get medical tests done for their Dubai residencies, not for other countries. So um, it was understandable that some of the staff there didn't know what I was talking about. A bit frustrating, but anyway. Eventually, I bumped into this nurse who was so lovely and she took me into her room and she sat me down and wrote down like step by step what I had to do, specifically who I had to go to see, where they were, blah, literally step by step. So with her help I finally managed to get everything done, uh, still took quite a bit of running around and by the end of it I'd you know, donated, given the blood, they'd done a chest x-ray, all good and I just had to wait for the results. And I swear, by the end of the day, they'd sent me to every single block in this medical centre, except block six, which was the embalming unit. I'm kind of glad they didn't send me there, because, yeah, no. Anyway, next morning, I got up, I had a bunch of stuff to do in the morning, and then I called the medical centre to see if my results were ready. Now, uh, they said they should have been ready by 10, and I booked my appointment for my visa application at three in the afternoon. So I was like, okay, well, hopefully it'll be ready in the morning and it'll be fine. Anyway, it wasn't ready, and it, it it took quite a few phone calls for me before they finally clocked onto the fact that I was quite desperate and I needed to have it today, because if I'd missed the appointment that I'd made, I wouldn't be allowed to make another one for two weeks. Yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't do that, that's just not possible. So um, they followed up with the place, the lab that was doing the testing and got them to push my results. They'd done my results, they just hadn't inputted them onto the system and until they were on the system they couldn't print off the, the medical results. So they kind of pushed them to do that quicker and yeah, I got my results, which was great. And all negative, all came back clear, which is great. Um, they don't test, they only test for AIDS, HIV, or the same thing. Um, hepatitis and tuberculosis, which is what the x-ray is for. Um, I believe that's all they test for. That's all I saw on the results anyway. Um, so yeah, good to know I don't have any of those. And uh, yeah, so I headed off to my appointment, which were, which went fine. There was no issues with that. That was nice and easy, um, surprisingly. I kind of kept expecting something to go wrong, but it didn't, thankfully. All went well. And then, yeah, and, I, and yesterday I went and collected my passport. And I now have my... Ooh my visa so that should well that's just get that just gets me in and um yeah so this is the funny bit so after i'd submitted my visa later i think it was that evening i was speaking to perry on uh, skype and I, we hadn't spoken properly we still really haven't spoken properly since then um he's just been really busy and i've been busy and just timing haven't worked out but um, I couldn't see him. His camera, for some reason, wasn't showing his video feed or anything. Anyway, so we were talking, and I was going through the whole, what everything I'd been through. And um, he was just like, I'm not... In the, oh, and he was, he'd was he gone for his um, USA, USA visa. Because he's now a student, and he'll be studying... He's doing his MBA between London Business School and Columbia Business School. 
in New York. So because he's going to be a student in the US, he has to get a student visa. So he went and he got a student visa last week. So that all went fine. He got the visa. Um, so we were talking and he was like, yeah, but um, now apparently I need to get a visa for the US as his dependent. And I was like, oh, right. Okay. Um, why do I now need to get a visa? That, that, can't I just travel as a regular tourist? He was like, yeah, but Colombia don't recommend that. They said that if they ever connect the fact that we're traveling together, that it could cause problems. And you know what? Going back to the whole do what you need to do to avoid getting into trouble. I was like, great, another visa. Seriously, another visa. Um, and at that point, I was just like, I don't know whether to laugh or cry because this seems to be like a never ending process. It's just never going to end. It's just one visa after another. Um, yeah, Perry joke, you know, we should just pack up and go home because this is just getting ridiculous. And it really is. It really is ridiculous. I've I figured out now that by the time we're done with all of this and by the time I have all the visas sorted, we will have the right to reside in four countries, not counting the two of which I am citizens as well, so six for me. We will have the right to, well, we, obviously we're from the UK, so we live there, we can live there. I've got citizenship for Iran, so I could live there. We both will have residency permits for Dubai, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. And now we both will have the right to live in the US for the next couple of years on his student visa. Talk about being a global citizen. I mean, how much more global than that can you get? Um, yeah interesting and uh, so yeah that was the that was my main sort of drama for last week and as a top it all off I broke my phone well, I say I broke my phone I didn't break my phone someone bumped into me and I dropped my phone because they bumped into me that hard and my phone smashed the screen just completely smashed and oh I was so in such a bad mood afterwards for quite a while but I'm not going to go into that. It was just annoying and frustrating and whatever. But I got it fixed, as you can see, because I'm podcasting. Because the entire front screen smashed, including the glass over the forward-facing camera. And anyway, it was just frustrating and annoying. But I got it fixed. Um, yeah. So other than that, this week has been pretty. This last week's been pretty good. I got to catch up with some of my knitting friends. Um, last week and I'll be seeing some of them again and some others again this evening for dinner which will be lovely. I've been hanging out with my friend and her kids and it's just been so much fun like looking off playing with the baby and stuff and the twins are at that age now where every now and again one of them especially is starting to get a little bit jealous of the baby so with when while I'm around I'm kind of taking the baby as much as I can so my friend can spend more time with the twins when they're around, not in nursery. So, um, to try and help the whole jealousy factor. But anyway, they're doing fine. They're all good. And they're very, very sweet girls. And, uh, yeah. All right. So next up is acquisitions. And I actually pre-recorded this last week before I left because I wasn't going to lug all my acquisitions with me here. Although now I kind of wish I had, so I'd have, I would have had something else to knit on. But it's okay. It's okay. I'll be fine. Um, so this acquisition segment is the last of the yarn that I haven't shown you yet. And it also includes some fabrics that I got. I, I also bought quite a lot of fabric when I was in the UK. I didn't really mention it much before. But um, so in this next clip, I'll be showing you some of the some of my favorite bits that I picked up. So here you go. So here we go. I've got a massive bag of stuff to show you, as well as a few other bits that are dotted around on my table. Right, starting off with Cascade Yarns Heritage Silk. So this is in a beautiful deep sort of plum color, which is colorway number 5633. Beautiful sort of, it's got quite a nice sheen to it as well. So I got that in the purple Got it in the grey, which is 5631. 
beautiful sort of darkish grey colour. And in this dark green, which is colour number 5608, if you're interested. And I actually think these three go really well together. I'm not sure what to make with it yet, but I'm thinking potentially a colour affection or some other three colour shawl. Not sure. What do you guys think? Any ideas? What would these three colours work well in together? There's how much in each one? 400 metres in each skein. Mm, lovely. Um, I also have these three skeins of Cascade. Uh, this is Heritage, just Cascade Yarns, Heritage, Sock Yarns. 75% Merino, Superwash, and 25% Nylon. So there's this soft pinkish colour in 5629. Sorry, 5649. This grey in 5602. And this sort of plummy purple colour, dropping stuff here, in 5632. These are the three colours. And these are going to be, this is going to be a shawl for my sister-in-law. So yeah, I'm looking forward to knitting that up for her soon. And I think if there are leftovers, which I think there will be, I might make her a pair of socks out of the leftovers, considering this is sock yarn. So that'll be fun if I can do that. And then I got some drops of lace. Now I don't actually have that much lace yarn and I've never actually knit with lace yarn before but I'm really excited to try it out because I think I'll really enjoy it. And so I got some drops lace in this grey colour. I actually got three of these because I have two of these earmarked to become a featherweight. There's three skeins of these and there's 800 metres in each, each one I believe. Yeah, 800 metres in each one, and it's colour 501, look at that, it's just a grey. So two of these can be more than enough for a featherweight shawl in pretty much any size. And yeah, I really want a nice light but warm cardigan that I can wear, and that'd be good for over here. But I also got three other colours of the lace yarn got this beautiful red sort of plummy purple and this lovely olivey green color which I actually think it's called olive online I love these colors I think they're so beautiful and so the third skein of the gray will probably end up being a contrast color with one of these or two of these depending on how I use them but I'm thinking I really want to knit the Rock Island by Jared Flood I can't decide which color it's knit in a purple yarn on the pattern photos, which I think would be beautiful, and I do love purple, so that's definitely one that I'm considering. I'm kind of not considering the red so much because I kind of want to do something else with that one, but I'm thinking maybe the green for the Rock Island or the purple. I can't decide. What do you guys think? Which one do you think would be better as the Rock Island, the green or the purple? Green or purple? Let me know what you think in the comments section on the, the thread and Ravelry because I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on that one. I also picked up two more skeins of Malabrigo Sock. So Malabrigo Sock was actually on sale while I was back in the UK, so I grabbed a couple. Yes. So I got the Velvet Grapes, which is the one that, I'm, that I used for the, the Boat Trip Cal test knit. Then I also got an Arco Iris colorway which is beautiful, beautiful sort of mauvey, purpley to greenies and blues and even hints of yellows and stuff. Oh, it's just beautiful, so many colours. When you open it up, you see all the colours underneath it as well. It's just really lovely. I'm looking forward to knitting with that one. And then I also got a uh, potion, potion, potion. I don't know how to say that. But this is beautiful, much deeper and darker than the Arco Iris, but sort of similar sort of idea with the colours. It's nice sort of reds and oranges and saw some blues and greens in there. Yeah, and you open it up and you can see the colours inside, it's beautiful. They're all just beautiful. 
Like I said before, Malabrigo sock is not my favorite to knit with, but it's definitely my favorite once it's been knit and once it's been washed and blocked. I also got some Malabrigo worsted, which is their really fluffy single ply. So I got one in pigeon. This is a worsted yarn, you get 210 yards and 100 grams. So good for a hat, I guess. So I got in pigeon, I got in this beautiful sunset yellow color. I love this color. It's definitely, this is, this is to me, this is golden yellow. This is my favorite shade of yellow. Perfect. Got it in Uva, which again, this is probably one of my favorite sort of tonal shades of purple. You can see where this is headed. And I also got a sapphire green is beautiful bright bright sort of grass green color I think these four look beautiful together personally but even if you take one of these out the rest all still kind of work so I'm not entirely sure what these are gonna be I did have a shawl pattern in mind for this which would be a really lovely sort of colourful but textured and um, squishy and warm so we will see. I also picked up two of the variegated skeins one in sapphire magenta which looks like a really fun sort of mix. Ooh, I'll grab them. It's basically a fun mix of these two into a skein of yarn. Don't you think? Almost kind of the same? And I also picked up a Wales Road, which is just Wales Road, sorry, as in the place Wales, not the animal. These beautiful blues and greens, some black bits in there. So, if you could see my desk right now, <laughs> um, that is it from this bag. And I only have one other yarny acquisition -y thing to show you. Finally, I'm almost there with all the yarn. This is actually the last, the, what I've just shown you now is the last of the yarn that I had waiting for me in the UK. The other stuff, the other yarn I have to show you actually was waiting for me in Dubai and Mel brought it for me to London. Mel was my, my friend who I met up with for I Knit Fandango. this out of the way. Okay, sit there. And that is my order from Artistic Yarns by Abby. So I apologize for the crinkling in advance. But we placed, um, when I knit my watermelon socks, like I've mentioned this before, I think, um, a bunch of the ladies in our knitting group in Dubai were really, in, was, were really interested in getting, getting some as well. Then Josie, who does the bind knits yarn. Uh, she um, organized and put up a, a list and people wrote down what yarns they wanted. And we were gonna place a bulk order with Abby for a bunch of her yarns. And these are all hand dyed, self striping, beautiful yarns and uh, sock yarns. So so yeah, so my order arrived, but I was already in Bahrain at the time. So Mel brought it over for me to London. So I got another skein of the self striping watermelon with seeds. So as I mentioned previously, I gave my watermelon socks to my mum. She loves them. Um, they fit her much better than they fit me. But I also knew I had another skein of this coming so I could make myself another pair once I figured out the best way of making them for me. I got uh, a skein of her watercolour stripe sock yarn, which is much more neon than it looked online when I, when I saw it, when I picked it out. So this wasn't what I was expecting. I definitely expected more saturated colors, but um, or rather deeper, darker saturated colors, not quite so fluorescent, but kind of growing on me. I'm not entirely sure what I feel about this one. It's definitely soft, it's beautiful, just like all her other yarns. But um, I might keep this and then next April, if the caffeinated knitting ladies, they do another neon April knit along, I might keep this for then because this is definitely neon. Look at those colors. It's anything but. 
And I also, this is probably my favorite, I got a skein of her Rainbows and Clouds colorway. So it's basically the rainbows colors stripe and then there's a stripe of white of uh, blue sky with clouds which I think is so much fun oh, I can't wait to knit this up this will be so beautiful if you hadn't already guessed I'm a little bit obsessed with rainbows Abby was really lovely and she also sent some um, samples minis minis of some of her other colorways so this one up here is citrus stripes this way around easier. this one's citrus stripes this one is bollywood and this one is stars and stripes so an american themed one rather appropriate so this will go into my bag of sock yarn scraps that will eventually become a sock yarn blanket when i get around to it she also sent um, obviously one of her business cards so statistic yarns by abby and she's on etsy so it's artistic yarns yarn by abby .etsy.com. Let's see that there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to focus or not. But I'll post a link to that on the show notes so you can go check it out. And she sent some beautiful stitch markers. There's this cute little Lucky Charm, four leaf clover, rather. A watermelon, because of course it has to be a watermelon charm. And this one, which I find rather hilarious, is a bumblebee. I find that hilarious because I am deathly afraid of bumblebees and wasps and anything that can sting you. Um, yeah. If you saw that episode that I filmed in London at my parents when I spotted the bee and I kind of just, everything stopped because I was just focused on this bee, but it was outside. So it took me a moment to realize that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the last thing I want to show you in acquisitions. I'm not showing you all of them because there are a lot. Um, other than yarn, when I was in the UK, I also bought a fair amount of fabric. So I just wanted to share with you some of the some of my favourite ones, and these most of these will be turned into project bags at some point soon. Um, and yeah, I'm not showing you everything. I have loads more. You can sort of just see there on the ironing board behind me that I still need to sort through. A lot of that pile is actually stuff that my auntie gave me. But um, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that I picked up that I really liked. Uh, so yes, so I picked up this cute little fat quarter with little teacups and teapots and coffee pots and stuff. It's so cute. Uh, owls, because love owls. Can never have too many owls. Love these, this floral fabric. This is really pretty. It almost looks like um, it's been hand painted but this one is really beautiful I love it it's kind of like a cityscape Paris obviously with the Eiffel Tower which I really liked cute elephants because they're fun elephants are always fun elephants and owls they're fun this cute little polka dot one and some fun sheep Ooh, either way up there we go fun sheep and also I picked up this fat quarter pack it's all the same fabric but it's all sort of crafting knitting sewing oh, that's the best way up there we go there's like sewing machines knitting needles and yarn embroidery hmm, sorry all sorts of stuff going on here and I have them in different colors it's on the white background it's on a blue background on black and then on pink as well so these will be bags and then I also picked up some fabric by by um, meters so this is this one which I absolutely love this color green and the flowers <laughs> some fun fruit because why not he doesn't want some fun fruit for the summer um, more owls because I love owls could you not tell um, I also had to get this sort of bear fabric if only because this bear here reminds me of Hugo when he sits like that and this one that reminds me of Derek so this is quite fun I like I like this fabric a lot and because as soon as I saw this I knew I was leaving with it 
<laughs> watermelon fabric. I may have to make myself a watermelon sock bag to knit my watermelon socks in because would that is that not the most perfect combination ever? Um, and then I just want to show a couple of the fabrics that my auntie gave me that I really liked. One is this, it's a very beautiful sort of, this is actually a vintage fabric that she had in her stash. It's beautiful. And this one, which is one of my favorites that she gave me, is a panel fabric. So even though it's yardage, it's actually in panels. You can see like large square panels. I'm not 100% sure how, what I'm gonna make with this, but whatever it is, it'll be beautiful because the fabric is beautiful. And I can't wait to figure out what to do with that. Very sort of bright florals. I'm not a massively floral person, like I don't, but I'm definitely warming up to it more as I get older than I did when I was younger, if that makes any sense. Fun. I'm gonna have so much fun with these fabrics when I get back from Dubai. Like I said, I've my plan was to have the Etsy shop open already or by the end of this month, but it's just not gonna happen. Um, as much as I wanted to, as much as I really, really wanted to. Sorry, I say end of this month, it's still May for me, but I think it'll probably be June by the time this goes out. Um, I really wanted to have an Etsy shop up and open by, by now, by the end of May. But um, like I said, with having gone to London and then realizing soon after getting back that I was gonna be going to Dubai, I just knew I was gonna have the time to be able to put into doing it properly. So now my goal is to have it done by the end of June, have an Etsy shop open with bags and stocks and everything, which is much more manageable. I just uh, just need to better manage my time. It'll, it will definitely mean less knitting time because there'll be more sewing going on, but that is fine because I knit plenty fast enough as it is. And if I just knit a little bit less, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, right, so I guess that is it for this section. And cut, this will probably cut back to me in the present. And so, so yeah, see you soon. Right, well, welcome back. And um, yeah, so now moving on to the Q&A section of this podcast. And I've been getting a lot of questions about how I knit. After I posted that video to Instagram a couple of weeks ago for help showing me knitting, um, I've had a lot of people asking me to show how I knit on the podcast and to show it slower so they can sort of see and explain it, as it were. So this week, I've got a little sample piece knit up, got some bamboo needles, quite large, so you can hopefully see what I'm doing. And I know I've not got the best setup for this, so I'm gonna do my best and what I will do if this doesn't look that great, then I'm gonna get Perry to help film me over my shoulder and I will talk you through it, do it a bit slower. So how I generally hold the yarn, I'll try and show you best as I can, is I wrap it around my pinky and then over, no, I don't even wrap it usually, I just kind of place it over my pinky and then over my index finger, so it's wrapped like this around my hand. And that I find gives me enough tension because I tension it with my middle fingers, I guess, against these ones. And then I hold it like that, okay? And then with this, with my index finger, I just sort of wrap it round. Like that. So that's how I do it, I flick. So, so most English style knitting people would throw, like let go, wrap it round and bring it through. And that's how I started. I started like this. And I found it was just too slow for me. I don't do well with slow. Uh, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with knitting like this. Loads of people knit this way and it's perfectly fine. There was no right or wrong way to knit. There's, as long as you're knitting knit stitches and you're purling purl stitches, you know, as long as you know how to make the two stitches, how you do them has no difference whatsoever. You could be knitting backwards and it wouldn't matter as long as you're knitting, because that's what's important. So this is how I used to knit. And it, like I said, I didn't enjoy it very much. So 
I decided I wanted to learn how to knit faster and I researched faster knitting techniques and as I said I was watching a lot of very pink knits and she flicks like I do and so I kind of just watched how she knit a lot really watched carefully in the videos and figured it out and she was holding it with the um, with the yarn held over her finger this way let me try to show you this way which I found really difficult because the yarn you're going to be trying to knit with is towards the back of your finger so I found every time I came round I would end up catching the front loop which is the wrong one because that's attached to the working yarn the, at that end so I found holding it on my finger this way round rather than that way round if that makes any sense works better because the yarn I'm trying to hook around the needle is on the front of my finger which makes it that much easier for me to knit Ooh, drop that one I have no idea I'm so sorry this is such a terrible angle I will definitely get Perry to help me with this over the weekend okay and then how I purl and then I just sort of loop that around bring it to the front and then it's the same thing I just my finger doesn't really move position I'm just still wrapping it around the needle pretty much the same way all around the back that's knitting and then around the front Ooh, that's purling having said that purling is definitely still slower for me than knitting it is definitely not as quick of a um, movement for me I can get a much faster speed going with knitting than I can with purling so that's basically how I knit and I'm like I mentioned I am so sorry that was not the best demonstration um, I'm not sure how well or how much you could get from that but um, like I said I'm going to do a separate video on that over the weekend and I'll insert it into next week's episode um, next question I've gotten a lot has been about finishing techniques and blocking for finishing techniques I um, I rarely do a regular bind off I mean I know this is a little bit different but I rarely do a regular bind off I always nearly pretty much always do a stretch bind off and there are two that I use one is the knit two together bind off so you knit two stitches and then you knit those two stitches that are on your right hand needle now together through the back loop and I think if you look on YouTube and you search for the knit two together bind off you'll find it and that because you're knitting the two stitches that have already been knit together again through the back loop you're adding an extra sort of stitch as it were which gives it added stretch oh someone's waking up um oh no no stay asleep stay sleeping that's good and um so it gives it added stretch and i find that always helps and the other one i really like is jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off and the trick with that one is not to do it too loosely because the stitch the bind off really has a lot of stretch built in you don't need to add more slack to it um i pretty much always use the mattress stitch for seaming i've rarely used anything else um and for weaving in ends i just do my best there is no real rhyme or reason i try to follow the stitch if it's stuck in that stitch I always try and follow the um, the stitch line, so it's almost like doing a duplicate stitch. Um, that hides it the best. I find that sometimes I'm lazy, and I don't do that. And then for ribbing, ribbing I actually find quite easy to hide the the yarn in because if you flip it to the wrong side, and then you can actually weave it through the knit stitches. And that works quite well and then that keeps it nice and hidden on the other side and then so yeah that, that pretty much I think that pretty much covers it for finishing techniques if there's anything specific you want to know more about let me know and I'll make sure to cover that in an upcoming episode I've also and about blocking right well as you can see I have a lot of stuff that needs to be blocked so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk to you talk through how I block and then I will um, 
explain the then I will what I will do is over the weekend when I do block all the stuff that I've got to block mostly shawls I will um, I'll take photos and stuff and I might do like a blog post about it as well well yeah we'll see how I do that but I will do another bit on that as well so what I do with blocking is um, I will wash now I got Eucalan so I, I'll use that but before I do Eucalan I would I would generally just use some conditioner I figure if it's good enough for my hair it'll be fine for wool because um, that's basically all wool is it's just it's animal hair so I would fill up a sink with um, warm water warm to hot water and I would um, just rub in I put some conditioner on my hands and I would basically wash it off in the hot water so it gets dispersed throughout then I will take the whatever the item is put it in the water and then sort of push it down give it a couple of squeezes like this I wouldn't uh, no rubbing uh, no sort of like scrunching just a couple of squeezes so it like takes in all the water and then you leave it you leave it for a good 10-15 minutes at least um, obviously you also want to make sure that your colours aren't going to run so you don't like ruin anything but um, for the most part it should be fine and um, yeah so you leave it to soak you leave it to soak and then um, once it's done soaking you come back you can drain the water and you basically carefully pick up your knitting you don't want to pick it up like this and let all the heaviness sort of drag it down because that will stretch it too much and it could distort the shape um, so you want to try and be, make sure you're picking it all up together and then um, don't wring it you do, You never wring your knitting because again you'll distort the shape of your stitches yeah you agree sorry allergies are making my nose tickle um, yeah and then you just you squeeze the water out you squeeze it out and you squeeze out as much of the water as you can with your hands like this and this is pretty much how I do it or sometimes what I'll do is I'll fold it up and then in half so it's kind of like a sausage shape and then I'll squeeze it in sections until I get all of it and then I'll get a towel sorry just making sure she's not about it get up or anything wake up rather I'll get a towel and then I'll usually have this in a long tube sausage type thing and I'll place it on the towel and I'll start rolling it up in the towel from the top so this will all be wrapped in a towel and then with the, with the towel around it I kind of just hug it and squeeze it under my arm or sometimes I'll sit on it and that just helps to squeeze out any excess water that you couldn't wring out I mean not wring, you couldn't squeeze out yourself by hand and then you unwrap it and I have blocking mats that I use and oh, they're nothing special they're just ones I got from the hardware store which are actually just foam play mats for kids and they're quite big ones so um, I think they're about one meter square each so I lay those out on the floor and then I lay whatever the item is that I'm going to block out as well and if it's a shawl in particular like where I start with shawls is because I don't have blocking wires so I tend to just block them really hard to get them get straight edges so what I'll do first is I will block the points the two the two end pieces with this flat it's a bit easier to see when it's on the ground and then I make sure the top edges are straight as I want then I pin out the bottom the middle point if it's, if it's a triangular shawl I mean even if it's a, if it's a even if it's a crescent shape I would always try and get the middle out first and then depending on what the edging is like you just sort of stretch it out and pin it out at different points along the way and I always try and do both sides at the same time so I kind of pin one side then I go do the opposite side so that's the best way I find at keeping it even sorry <coughs> oh jeez my allergies are going crazy today um, yeah and then usually by the time I've finished it finished pinning it out I will go back and I, I pin again I repin and pull because I find then that it will stretch even more 
as it settles once you've gotten everything in and I just go back and I will go back and I will repin and um, stretch it out as much as I need it to um, as many times as I need to until I'm happy with the final shape and then I leave it I don't touch it until it's dry and then once it's dry I uh, unpin it and usually it does spring back a little bit but not that much but it's the nature of it and uh, and yeah and that's how I block my knitting so like I said I'm gonna try and either get photos of it or I'll try and get Perry to help me film a bit so I can show you the exact process I go through but if you do um, again if you search on YouTube a little bit how to block knitting or how to wet block knitting specifically um, you should be able to find some stuff about that as well I think I remember finding a few good videos that helped um, right other questions I think I'll only uh, yeah, I had a couple of other questions which I think I'll save for another episode just because this is taking quite a while. I had a question about if there is a knitting or fabric and fibre culture in Bahrain. Honestly, I, I think there is definitely a fabric slash fibre culture in Bahrain. I'm not so much sure about the knitting and I'm not really sure to what extent I need to do some research into that but it's a very interesting question and it's one I'm actually quite interested in myself as well so I will be looking into that and I will let you know in the future in a future episode and I had a couple of people asking me to talk a bit more about the traveling that I've done or that my husband and I've done and I and I do want to talk a bit more about that I do really enjoy traveling and I do love talking about it um, I do honestly think it's one of the things that I'm really glad that my husband and I have in com common. Um, I think it's also one of the things that drew us together was our love of travel. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's definitely, for me anyway, it's one of the more important things for us to be able to do. Um, it's something that we both place a lot of value in, so over material things, I think. And I think I mentioned this last week as well. Um, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with not travelling, but for us, we like it, and I really enjoy it. And I definitely think there's a difference between travelling and holidays. I think, for me, there's a distinct difference between the two. Um, but like I said, I'll go into all of that a bit more in another episode. I think this one's, this episode's already pretty long now. Right. <sighs> Well, sorry about that little break. This little one woke up and wanted a cuddle. Hello. So I think I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, I've got quite a lot of stuff to do when I get back to Dubai. This week is going to be quite a nice relaxed week, I think. And uh, when I get back, I've got a lot of sewing to do over the weekend. I need to finally book my turkey trip. Honestly, trying to organise a family holiday with family that's spread around all over the world. It's not easy. And... Um, Oh, come on, don't worry, it's okay. Oops, someone's fussing. Um, Perry's off to New York next week for the next leg of his course, so I'm going to be alone for most of the next week as well. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks, doesn't it? It's alright, it means I'll get a lot of knitting and sewing and stuff done. And, uh, and yeah. And I'm going to have the... Oh. No, 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 no crying. Uh, okay, she's going to want a bit of a walk around in a minute. Uh, yes, a knit along update. So the shawl pattern is going to be released next week. And then you guys are more than welcome to start knitting the shawls from then for the knit along. But I won't open the knit along finished objects thread until the 1st of July. So whips will be allowed. But no, no, by, no casting off before the 1st of July. So the, the official knit along will run from the 1st of July to the 24th of August. And I spoke to Mel of the Yarn Tree UK. She's going to make sure that those of you who have ordered yarn from her will um, get it by the 1st of July. And uh, so, yeah, there's still time to order yarn if you want some from her which is the Fiery Sunset colorway, which is the one that I knit my shawl in. And, 
and yeah so that's that thank you all for stopping by and watching i've got to go entertain this little one now for the rest of the morning and uh yeah enjoy your knitting thank you very much uh please come by join the ravelry group if you haven't already and leave me a comment let me know what you think of the podcast and this one's had enough so i will see you guys all next week bye